and members of the faculty. A very good evening to you all. Let's start the event with the national anthem. I request everyone present to rise for the same. जनगण मन अधिनायक जय है भारत भाग्य विदाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्छल जलति तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष बागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जनगण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदादा जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे We are pleased to invite you to the presentation of Father Marathi Parampal Sikhsi Dotal Golden Jubilee Memorial Best English Teacher Award. The inauguration of the College Centenary Memorial Green Campus Initiative and the Reconciliation and Peace Education Moment of the Dharma Rajavedi. Let's begin this event by seeking the blessings of the Almighty. I call upon Ashwin for the prayer song. सर्वचराचर सृष्टा वंदेव में सत्य सनातन चैतन्य में पुण्यम विदरुम निन कारुण्य रश्मिकल यन्ने नुम न्यंगली धुगनम नी स्नेहवम शांतियम नीति दर्मंगलम एकनामिन्नुरे रूप भेदम स्नेहवम शांतियम नीति दर्मंगलम एकनामिन्नुरे रूप भेदम विश्व संगीत तीन सोच मतरंगवम विश्वेश्वरानिंदे मंद्रदातम सर्वचराचर सृष्टावम देवमें सत्य सनादन चैतन्यमें पुण्यम विदरुम निन कारुण्य रश्मिगण Yenne num nyangalil thuganam di. Thank you, Ashwin. Now I request our principal, Reverend Father Reggie Pikurian, to give the welcome address. Honorable Governor of Kerala, Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, Ajarya Sri Sachidananda Bharati, Reverend Dr. George Marathi Parambil, former principal, Swami Bodhendra Tirtha Ajarya, Reverend Dr. Adai Jacob Korapiskopa, Dr. Hussein Madavu, Dr. C.S. Biju, Mr. P.J. Thomas, Head of the Department of English, Vice Principals, Respected Teachers, Former Teachers, Invited Girls and My Dear Students. Good evening to all. Confucius famously remarked, The will to win, the desire to succeed and the urge to reach your full potential are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. I am immensely happy to say that St. Buckman's College 
has been dedicated to academic excellence over the last 100 years. This institution, founded in 1922 by Venerable Mar Thomas Kuriala Seri, began with the noble goal of the Universal Catholic Church to mold young men and women into responsible citizens with dignity and integrity. It has shaped the destiny of hundreds of students for a better tomorrow. This century-old college, with its own distinct identity and tradition, has served many generations as a tower of learning and beacon of motivation, as it has emerged as a premier institution for teaching, learning, and research in the field of higher education in South India. As a leading educational institution in the country, St. Buckman's College is dedicated to recognizing and honoring the best teachers in the state by bestowing the prestigious Buckman's Award instituted by the Kuwait chapter of the Alumni Association of the College. In this centenary year, the college is taking another step to recognize excellence by presenting the Reverend Father George Madati Parambil Sachardothal Golden Jubilee Memorial Award in collaboration with the Department of English to the best college English teacher in Kerala. The award committee chose Dr. C.S. Biju, Professor of English at St. Thomas College, Thrissur, as the winner of the award after extensive screening and deliberation. On this occasion, dear Bijusa, I congratulate you on this achievement and wish you all the best for your future academic endeavors. In many ways, this function is noteworthy. His Excellency Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, Honorable Governor of Kerala, is launching two other programs today as part of our, of our college's centenary initiatives, namely Reconciliation and Peace Education and SB Centenary Memorial Green Campus Initiative. Today, that is 5th December, is World Soil Day. And it is fitting to inaugurate these two initiatives together. We have come from soil and will return to soil. Let us remind ourselves with this truth always. This truth will set us free to follow the path of truth. The right kind of education should enable us to discover truth following the Upanishadic dictum Satyam Vada Dharmam Chara that is, speak the truth and walk in the path of righteousness. You all know Satyameva Jayade is the national motto of India. As responsible and patriotic citizens of India, it is our first and foremost fundamental duty to uphold and pursue truth and righteousness at all times and in all things. Hence, today is the best day to begin the reconciliation and peace education movement, RPEM, in the to lead Kerala in the path of truth and righteousness. And this is the suitable day to start the, greet, the green initiative of the campus. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Swami Ajayriya Sri Sachidananda Bharati, who is the founder of this reconciliation and peace education movement and his fellow founders. Also, I thank the teachers who are the driving force behind these two significant initiatives in the campus. Now, let me fulfill the duty that is invested me in me in this meeting. It is my pleasure to extend a warm welcome to you all to this program. Our manager, Reverend Dr. James Palakil, does not require any formal introduction. He supports us in all our endeavors and inspires us to complete our various tasks with utmost sincerity and commitment. 
dear father i cordially invite you to this function it is my privilege to welcome the chief guest of the day honorable governor sri arif muhammad khan he has had a long political career having served as minister in many previous governments it is a joyous and proud occasion for all of us that the honorable governor of the state is on our campus as the chief guest for this noble function so we are quite grateful to you that you accepted our invitation so on behalf of the berkman's community i extend to you a warm and cordial welcome acharya shri sachidananda bharati is the keynote speaker of this function i am sure some of you have read about the transformation of the squadron leader of the indian air force into acharya shri sachidananda bharati i warmly welcome you acharya shri sachidananda bharati to our campus and to this program i extend our sincere welcome to swami bodhendra teertha acharya vice president dharma rajya vedi reverend dr adai jacob corepiscopa founder principal of the malangara syrian orthodox theological seminary and convener kerala council of reconciliation and peace and dr hussein madavu chief imam of palayam juma masjid kolikot and vice president dharma rajya vedi and indian islamic scholar and educationalist who are here to address us our former principal reverend dr george madathi parambal is an excellent teacher a source of inspiration and encouragement and an effective administrator dear father i cordially invite you to this function i warmly welcome dr c s biju the recipient of the first reverend father george madathi parambal Sachar Dothal Golden Jubilee Memorial Award. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to his family, his colleagues, and the representatives from Saint Thomas College, Thrissur. I also welcome Professor P J Thomas, head of the Department of English, and the chief organizer of this program. I cordially welcome our vice principals. Dr Benny Matthew and Dr Joseph Job heads of the departments our former teachers invited guests administrative staff of our college and teachers from nearby colleges to this function last but not the least i wholeheartedly welcome my dear students to this function welcoming you all once again i remain thank you thank you father reji the best english teacher awardee dr c s biju is here with us today he serves as a professor in the research department of english at the prestigious saint thomas college trishu dr biju has completed his studies at the department of english university of calicut and the city university of new york he has nine phd's and is deeply involved in transdisciplinary research theater studies and south asian diaspora dr biju founded the center for media studies at saint thomas college the organization has since organized 11 international conferences he has presented papers plenary lectures and backed three international fellowships including the fulbright and charles wallace trust fellowship i invite dr c s bichu to felicitate the gathering evam Good afternoon to one and all. His Excellency Dr. Arif Muhammad Khan, Governor of Kerala, Very Reverend Father Dr. James Palakal, Manager, Saint Bertrand's College, Very Reverend Father Dr. George Marathi Parambil, Former Principal, Saint Bertrand's College, Beloved Principal Father Reggie, <coughs> Dignitaries, 
Swami Sachidananda Bharati and very reverend fathers, dear professors, and my dear friends. This is a moment of great honor and pride to receive Reverend Dr. George Madhati Parambil Award as part of the centenary celebrations of SB College, Changanasheri, the most reputed scholastic center of excellence in Kerala. And it is from the renowned scholar politician, Dr. Arif Muhammad Khan. <coughs> May express my indebtedness to you, sir, for your kindness in uh, consenting to give away the award. On this auspicious occasion, I uh, would like to remember with immense gratitude all those who have inspired me to become a teacher. <coughs> My parents and uh, teachers of great credentials, uh, Mr. C.S. Cherry and uh, Ms. Thangama, all beloved teachers from my primary school to my research, Dr. Matthew Joseph, uh, Dr. A.K. Nambia, supervisor of my second PhD in fine arts, M my mentors, Professor Claudia Orenstein and Professor Richard Schechner. I have started my research supervision at uh, the English department of SB College, Anganai Shiri, long back in 2007. <coughs> And I collaborated with the English Department of SB College for many international ventures. The beauty of this occasion is none other than this award is founded by a great scholar priest, Reverend uh, Dr. George Marathi Parambil. I'm immensely thankful for you, uh, to you, Father. I would also love to extend my deepest uh, gratitude to the manager and principal of St. Berkman's College. This is a great pleasure to thank Professor P.J. Thomas, a wonderful scholar and internationally acknowledged academic and the faculty of the English Department of SB College for making this, institu this uh, uh, institution my second home. I extend my warmest regards to the reverend uh, managers and principals of St. Thomas College, Trishur, where I teach for uh, their consistent support. I wish to mention especially Mar Rafael Tatil, and Mark Tony Nilagavil for their affection and inspiration. Uh, inspiration at St. Thomas College. And the English Department of St. Thomas College and Media Studies Department, which, which I founded, are always uh, uh, in my heart. I remember all my students with immense gratitude because the students shape up the life of a teacher and some of them are still my source of inspiration and uh, my refuge. <coughs> my partner, Ms. Sena Matthews, and my children, Shreya and Anthony, uh, they have sacrificed many of their happiness uh, for my unending academic journeys and sleepless nights. My sojourn wouldn't be this fruitful uh, without them. May I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have gathered here uh, to bless me. I'll conclude with a small remark. I was appointed as a visiting faculty at the Vishwa Bharati University at Shantiniketan, founded by uh, Devindranath Tagore <clears throat> in 2019. While wandering through the Shantiniketan campus, uh, where Amartya Sen and all these people live, while uh, the, uh, through the banks of River Padma, among the sculptors of Ram uh, Kinkar Baich, Nandan Lal Ghosh, Radha Krishnan, I felt in my veins the, the, the presence of one of the greatest gurus we have, <coughs> uh, Rabindranath Tagore, who taught us uh, the meaning of education as ultimate truth, inner light, and love. Let him lead us all in the turmoil of higher education in our time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We are extremely delighted to be joined by Reverend Dr. George, George Marthi Parambil, former principal of St. Berkman's College, this evening. I call upon Reverend Dr. Marthi Parambil to give the felicitation speech.
Your Excellency, Governor Arif Mohammed Khan, Manager for James Palakal, Principal, Distinguished Guests, Ajariya Sachidananda Bharati, and dear friends and colleagues. It's a joy for me to be here at this moment, especially because SP College is celebrating its centenary and with the presence of the governor of the state of Kerala. You know, Arif Muhammad Khan, our beloved governor, has consistently put a lot of effort to improve the system of higher education in Kerala. Therefore, he needs a lot of support and encouragement to do his work courageously and with no fear. And that will change the whole landscape of university education in Kerala. Behind all the uh, attempts and efforts be of uh, getting this award organized, I heard the words of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru when he spoke in the parliament when the agitation against English was very strong in India. Many people wanted to remove English from the universities, codes, and uh, from business transactions. The two, three words that he used, English is the window to the world. And because of his consistent and strong support for English language, Indians have established a dominant place in the whole world. And therefore, the present economic prosperity that India is enjoying is because of the foundation that was laid on the basis of the education that was given in English. Therefore, I am even glad that the governor who represents the nation is here to inaugurate and to present this award. And um, I also take this occasion to congratulate Dr. C.S. Biju, who has uh, enormous and wonderful, marvelous credentials, academic credentials to his credit. Uh, going over his resume, I found that he has um, established so many new initiatives which were never even thought of by other people. One of the former vice chancellors of Oxford University, Sir Richard Livingston, in one of his key addresses, he said, the aim of higher education is to transfer the best in knowledge as well as to enhance the moral awareness of the students. And if education doesn't fulfill that, then it is a failure. Our college has done both, and I am so glad that this award is being presented to the worthiest person by a worthy person, the governor of Kerala. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. Swami Bhutendra Tirtha, Acharya of Ananda Dhamamasham Kollam, and the Vice President of the Dharma Raja Vedi has joined us today. Now I invite Swami Bhutendra to give the special address. Mangalam Dishatume Agasha, Mangalam Dishatume Vayuhu, Mangalam Dishatume Aknihi, Mangalam Dishatume Apaha, Mangalam Dishatume Prithvihi. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. My humble pranams to all dignitaries gathered here, especially to our chief guest, His Excellency, Honorable Governor of Kerala, Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, beloved Ajayi Sri, and all other eminent personalities assembled here. I am really very happy to be with you. All this historic moment of our college centenary celebration programs. Vidyalayas and Devalayas are temples of teaching and preaching morality and humanity with all its scientific temper. So, our college really deserves the divine fortune to launch Dharmarajya Vedi's pilot project of reconciliation and peace movement for the integral renaissance of our state, Kerala, God's own country. See, Kerala stands first in many aspects is a pleasant fact, but unfortunately, our state is moving fast and fast to certain negative aspects also. That another bitter reality we must consider. Now, three major superstitions are ruling our present society. 
first political superstition that means my party is correct right my party alone is correct right then religious superstition that means my religion and my god is right my religion and my god alone is right three scientific superstition that means my god science has all solutions to all problems of our life my god science only is correct see politics without nationality religion without spirituality science without humanity is utter failure and dangerous kerala is known as bhargava bhoomi land of parashurama parashurama as we heard come from north india for the integral lessons of kerala at that time malanadu unfortunately now no one has the moral strength to respond at this crucial period of moral degradation of rulers as well as majority of our people see at this confused period again god sent another destined responsible governor from north like parashurama as a savior for the correction erection and resurrection of god's own country paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya dushkritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge see parashurama tried 21 times 21 rounds with his best to build and mold this kerala such a herculean task bhagiratha prayatna is needed now also for this moral uplifting process of kerala dear governor rama rama with his kodanda killed all asuric demons of that time at the forest areas krishna with his sudarshana chakra destroyed asuric demons of that times at the streets and town areas now we have to destroy this evil elements within us in our mind with the ever green ever powerful everlasting divine weapon of love 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 now all demonic characters are living happily in our own mind mind it remind it so as a responsible and patriotic citizen of india we have the moral fundamental duty to preserve our holy constitution of india so we must stand firm with ajarya shri and our honorable governor ji in this battlefield of dharma ultimately we feel we are the destined citizens of this state to mold the destiny of our own personal life and our national life we are all biologically and spiritually interconnected organs so we are all organisms that is our advaita oneness that must be our lahari not any destructive narcotic drugs hari must be our lahari hari means god that god is our lahari on god's own country our governor we see he promised to protect the soul of our state kerala we can only promise to protect the soil of kerala in this soil day please remember in ancient time odi shankara from kerala this kerala built a cultural bridge of advaita oneness from this holy land of vedas to himalayas the holy land of devas mooladhara kerala and meladhara himalaya and solved the north south issues in our time yuga purusha shri narayana gurudeva started an integral renaissance and fulfilled this oneness advaita through a bloodless revolution and again kerala regained her godliness heritage now also we are responsible for another integral renaissance for that purpose we are all gathered here and we are all pledged and promised to keep this in our mind and again again remind it jai hind vande madara loka samasta sukhino bhavandu om shanti 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 thank you swami bodhendra tirtha now i invite reverend dr adai jacob corpuscopa the founder and principal of the malangara serian orthodox theological seminary and convener of kerala council for reconciliation and peace to give the special address
His Excellency Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, our Honorable Governor, dignitaries on the stage, and distinguished guests. We have, we have already given an award to the best English teacher in the colleges. And congratulate at first Dr. C.S. Raju for getting this prize. Now, when we think of English education in the colleges, I think the level of edu English education has come down. Perhaps I don't know, Dr. C.S. Raju will agree with it. When I was in the college, Shakespeare was unavoidable in the degree syllabus. But Shakespeare is taken away, I think, from the degree syllabus. The lessons from dramas of Shakespeare will remain in the hearts of students especially because of the characters presented in the uh, Shakespeare dramas. And also, the level of the increase, the level of education, Wordsworth and Shakespeare, all these things must be included in the syllabus of the uh, college English course. That is my opinion about English. Now, we are in, uh, inaugurating the reconciliation and peace mo education movement here in this college. Why a new movement is inaugurated? It is because the colleges and the universities are now battlefields of political parties. I have the opinion that if the Indian army is directly under the president of India, why not all the universities and, and the colleges come under the president of India because they are the future of India, the students studying in the colleges and uh, different subjects. They mold the future of India if they fight each other every day in uh, Ernavalam, in the college, there will be a fight and also strike of students. Why? The political parties are playing behind it. This must be stopped forever. That will affect the future of India. Therefore, I have a humble request to the Honorable Governor of Kerala why not you make a suggestion that the education and the, all the universities in India may come under the president of India and, and peace and reconciliation be established in all the colleges and the universities. Now, at the last, let me congratulate and express my best wishes and God's blessings to the management, principal, staff and students of SP College, Changanashari. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We are, we are pleased to have Dr. Hussain Madhur, the Chief Imam of Palayam Masjid, Palayam Jama Masjid, Kolkur, Chairman Department of Arabic, Sri Narayana Open University, and Vice Chairman of KCRP, with us today. I call upon Dr. Hussain to deliver the special address. Honorable Governor of Kerala, His Excellency Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, authorities of this institution, higher education institution, and my beloved friend. Swamiji, Swami Ajarya Sri, other dignitaries on the dais of the dais. First of all, I extend my sincere thanks and gratitude 
for being here and i have been invited to attend this august function this is very important function this is need of our because inauguration of a new movement in this college for reconciliation and peace education movement i i believe this is the first one in this kind in our state so i congratulate the authorities of this college for giving an opportunity for this movement here and we were invited we are invited here to attend this function peace all people in the world they are thinking and they do research also on peace so many peace movements are working in the several parts of the world what is peace why peace people are divided in the name of nation religion culture language and such other differences so they are thinking how can we live with mutual respect love compassion and coexistence so there should be some pillars uh, agreed by or faith all faith and political missions that first thing is one creator god allah ishwar bhagwan he created all human being and entire world we say muslim say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin means all praises to allah the god or sustainer of the entire world that is a prayer in five times every muslim saying that alhamdulillah rabbil alamin if some say rabbil muslimin it will not be a part of quran because god is not only for muslims but entire universe and that is the one god created us all there is no a god for muslims and another god for hindus and another for christians no god is one and the second thing all mankind they are from one father and one mother from adam in the language of bible from adam in the language of quran so we can see one word adami am admi or insan so our forefather first father and mother is one we from a single man and single woman all of us are created here so all of us are brothers and sisters the third pillar values moralities are one and equal for all justice love peace and like this uh, honest everything are for everybody no differences in these values here we are thinking we are researching how can we establish peace and harmony among people we have differences of faiths so swami ji is trying to make a platform to organize peace mission so dharma rajya vedi as a servant of this vedi i understood and recognized that swami ji is traveling all over india to establish this dharma rajya that means the a place for love and morality and righteousness so we can live here with uh, humanity and with peace with calm and love mutual understanding in sri narayana guru open university i am now uh, serving in this new university as head of the department of arabic and a member of uh, uh, department of uh, logic and humanism so vice chancellor told us why all students should study one paper on humanism that is the concept of sri narayana guru humanity humanity humanism that is the main uh, valuable thing among us so i extend 
once more my gratitude and thanks for the organization for inviting me to attend this function especially with our beloved governor arif mohammad khan thank you thank you dr hussein acharya shri dr sachidanand bharati is the founder of acharya founder and acharya guru of dharma bharati ashram and dharma rajyavedi it's my pleasure to invite dr bharati to deliver the keynote address ಪರಮಸುಗಧಂ ಕೇವಲ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದಂದ್ವಾದೀದ ಗಹನ ಸದೃಶ್ಯ ತತ್ವಸ್ಯಾದೀಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಯೇಗಂ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ವಿಮಲ ಅಚಲ ಸರ್ವೀನ್ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂದ ಭಾವಾದೀದ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರೋ ತಂ ನಮಿ ದ ಚೀಫ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಫಂಕ್ಷನ್ honorable governor of kerala the president of the function reverend dr james the manager of the school of college and father reji the honorable principal of this college and dr siju who is won the first award for the best teacher english teacher in kerala and my esteemed friends swami bodhendra tirtha dr husain madavur dr adai jacob and also father marathi parambil first time when i visited this college father marathi parambil was the principal of this college so i am today visiting this college in a way second time for a function and i am happy that he is here and he is instituted an award for the best teacher in english the very important for kerala some years ago when i came to kerala to address some meetings dr mv paili that time the vice chancellor of the cochin university he told me one thing that the deficiency of kerala or the drawback of the people young people educated from kerala is the lack of proficiency in english i have been also finding this english language is very important if you want to get a good job and if you want to provide leadership at higher levels of management so i am very happy father marathi parambil you have taken this initiative and started this award for the best teacher english teacher of this state reconciliation uh, and peace education movement this is the historic event as already mentioned by my friend dr husain madavur this movement is a historic event movement for kerala through this our aim is to transform the college and university campuses from battlefields of conflicts and violence to gardens of reconciliation and peace how are we going to do it by raising the level of consciousness Albert Einstein said a very important thing the solution for a problem cannot be found at the same level of thinking that created the problem we have to raise the level of thinking kerala today is going through a lot of crisis at all levels economic social political religious ecological educational all these areas of life in kerala is affected and why precisely because we are stuck at a level of consciousness and not able to rise higher my friends if you understand the evolution of human consciousness there are basically three stages the stage of justice the stage of righteousness and the stage of love justice is the realm of politics righteousness is the realm of religion and love is the realm of spirituality 
we have to rise through these levels of our evolutionary growth. So we have saturated in the level, the first level, where politics is all pervasive. Wherever you go, everything is politicized. Education is politicized. Religion is politicized. Social life is politicized. It is saturated everywhere. Because now we have to go to the next level, the right righteousness, where the duty becomes the important thing, not your right and privileges. Right is what distinguishes human being from the animal kingdom. There is a concept of law and justice. From the animal to the human, that is the graduation. But from human to higher level of human being, that is through righteousness. Dharma, the duty. So we, at this stage in the history of Kerala, we have to go beyond this politics and justice concept to a deeper concept of righteousness, the duty. And that is why today we will be releasing the fundamental duties of Indian citizen at the constitutional foundation of the movement that is being initiated from here today. Eleven fundamental duties. In 2007, I went around the country. I addressed 27 universities calling for a second freedom struggle of India. And I found not even a single university there could be a professor or a student who could say the whole Article 51A, the fundamental duties of Indian citizens. My friends, no nation can be great by fighting for more and more rights and privileges. When John F. Kennedy took over as the President of the United States, he told the people of America, do not ask what American, America can do for you, but ask what you can do for America. My friends, we are celebrating 75 years of political freedom in our country. Even today, we do not know what is our duty. And especially Kerala. I have taken two trips across Kerala, one was last year, one about 10 years ago. I have seen at least 35 places, people having strike or band or hartal, and everywhere you will find a list of rights and privileges that demands. Not a single place I heard the voice of any duty to anyone. We cannot go forward like this. India cannot go forward like this. And it is Kerala that must show the way. Because this is the most literate and politically conscious state. This is the state that has shown the way for many things, not only in India, but in the whole world. As you know, first time in the world, communism was elected to power in this state. The only place in the world where three world religions live together peacefully. Hinduism, Islam and Christianity for centuries together. You will not find this anywhere else in the world. And the cooperative movement, the trade union movement, the coalition government, all these has been started from this small state of ours. My friends, a time has come in the history of Kerala. It must show a way. It must show a way out of the predicament the nation has landed up in. The divisive consciousness, the communal conflicts that is happening at different parts of the country, and the political violence that is happening, we must go beyond this to a level of righteousness where we can find a unity. And that is where the fundamental duties are chosen as the foundation of this movement, the 11 fundamental duties. And there will be 10 people will be given that today and plus two of us, total 12. This fundamental duty will have to be protected and preserved in the country, in our state to begin with. And that is where the campuses becomes important. The college exists for educating the people to provide higher education to the youth of Kerala. And the teachers are here to teach them. The students are there to learn them. That is their duty, also their right. But sometimes, 
political parties, their interference do not allow these teachers to teach, the students to learn, and the management to run the colleges and universities efficiently. So the next slogan is not for rights and privileges, but for duties. Avagashangal nyangal killa, kadamagal nyangal de pavana lechyam, nyangal de kadamagal naraveti dan, nyangal nedum swadhandiram. The highest freedom is the freedom to fulfill our duties to our parents, to our brothers and sisters, to our country, to everyone to whom we owe many things. You and I are here because of many others who have sacrificed many things. Especially my student friends will say, understand this, because our parents have struggled to send us to a college. Only 5% of the people have the opportunity in, in, in India to come to the college, 5% of the youth. And you are among that. And this is because your parents have made the sacrifice to send you here. But now, what happens in the college? Some party, some party youth wing, they have their vested interest and they call for a band and a hartal. A number of videos has been coming to me. And one, I was really shocked. Students, a girl student shouting a slogan. Kayum betum, kalum betum, vendi vannal talayum betum. My friends, this cannot go on like this. I have to keep telling the youth, stop running. Don't try to escape. This is your land, your state. You have to claim it is our own. Political parties are there to serve the people. The government servants are there to serve the people. You have elected and sent them there. You are paying the salary of the government servants. So you should have the responsible citizenship to know what is your duty to the nation. 1976, the emergency. It was a worst experience for India. But there was something beautiful came out of it. That is the introduction of Article 51A into the Constitution of India, the fundamental duties. As a result, India is one of the very few countries which has got the fundamental duties in the Constitution. So we are very fortunate. So in every crisis, my friends, there is a seed of opportunity. Just as the emergency had a seed of opportunity that gave birth to the fundamental duties, the political situation today is also having wonderful opportunities. One first opportunity, important opportunity is saving the higher education in the state from political interference. I come from a defense background. I have known Arif Muhammad Khan when I was an Air Force officer. In 1984, sir, when you resigned from the Rajiv Gandhi government, there was a case, Shabanu case. I don't know any of you remember this. Rajiv Gandhi had 423 parliament seats, absolute majority. There was a poor woman, Shabanu, a Muslim lady. The Supreme Court came to a ruling that she must be given an alimony, some 137 rupees or something per month by the husband. And there was a big issue made by the Muslim ulema on this. And the parties have the vote bank politics in their mind. And the government passed an act in the parliament in a way superseding the Supreme Court judgment. There was only one man who stood up in the parliament and said, this is unconstitutional and un-Islamic. Arif Muhammad Khan, the 35-year-old minister of the time. My friends, it is from there I started my relationship with him, 1984. I wrote a letter, but then I was in the defense service at the time, the course commander of the Air Force Academy for the pilot's course. So I could not get involved with this political leadership. So I kept quiet. But when I left the Air Force in 1989, I met him in Delhi. And it is from there our friendship began. When I was in UP in 2013, 
for the communal violence in muzaffarnagar i was invited he came there and we worked together to promote communal harmony in up when i was in nagpur teaching the peace and value education arif mohammed khan ji had come there also supporting my issues and when he came to kerala in 2019 he made a visit to my humble ashram i told him not to come to my ashram mine is a humble ashram because now we are no more just close friends you are a governor i am a sanyasi but arif ji said no i will come so he came there had lunch with us and it was a great meeting and then when he came to the my office there was a photograph of swami ranganath ananda so happens to be his mentor as well as my mentor i lived in four religions christianity hinduism islam and sikhism five years in ramakrishna mission my study of the hindu spiritual tradition especially the prasthana trayam upanishad gita and brahma sutra swami ji was my guru and when he saw swami ji's photo in my uh, prayer room he said oh what a wonderful thing swami ji is my mentor as well and his birthday was coming out on 15th of december 2019 and we decided we will have something on 15th december 2019 and we launched the integral renaissance of kerala he came all the way in poc pastoral orientation center there was a big function and we started this and everything was going with the full swing that is when the covid came came to a standstill after the covid we felt we must revive and some of my friends said swami ji we must go across the kerala once again so we traveled from kasaragod to trivandrum 8 days i took and some of you got a report of that that yatra sarva dharma sadbhavana kerala yatra it concluded on 14th october in trivandrum and arif ji was there on the concluding function inaugurating the tyagarchana maha yagna so that was the beginning now that tyagarchana maha yagna is today being brought into the educational sector especially higher education how to redeem the higher education in kerala and i felt today arif khan is a man of destiny for this state and he as the chancellor as the governor he has been in his own way trying to improve the quality of higher education in the state so dharmaraj vedi felt this may be a god golden opportunity for us to take up this mission of reformation of higher education in the state and that is when my esteemed friend professor pj uh, thomas he attended a program a leadership course in the ashram and it is from there our friendship began and he wanted to start something like this and he asked me will it be possible for you to recommend to honorable governor that we want to start something like this in this college will he be kind enough to come and inaugurate that so today he has kept the promise and he is with us today but this movement that we are launching reconciliation and peace education movement rpem we are also instituting an award from today annual award for the best college in kerala which conducts maximum classes that is performance and the best results so from next year dharmaraj vedi will be having this RPM award annual award the president of dharmaraj vedi ambassador kp fabian said we could keep it a 1 lakh rupee annual so from next year the best college in kerala will receive a 1 lakh rupee RPM award and there are certain criteria we are planning first is your performance performance not only in the academic field but also in promoting the fundamental duties of indian citizen in your college to develop the citizenship consciousness among the students and teachers of the college because that is very important 
we must be proud citizen of the democratic republic of india we are no more subjects these are subjects who always ask for privileges you know you know uh, this right that right but the citizen always gives something to the nation so the fundamental duties the 11 fundamental duties it will be our responsibility especially this college is the first one taking coming forward as a centenary celebration project so this college will be a pilot project in one year's time we must make it something exemplary for other colleges in the state that colleges can be centers of reconciliation and peace gardens of that this need not be violence so my friends today as we venture out onto this i pray specially for this college which is taking the initiative i pray specially for my three friends swami ji representing the hindu community dr husain madavur representing the islamic community and uh, reverend dr adai jacob representing the christian community so these three communities the religion has to play an important role many a time the secularism is being misunderstood in in our country especially kerala secularism is something that originated in the west as an anti religious movement so it was one tragedy i would say of the emergency that we added two more sentences to the uh, two more words to the preamble of the constitution we were a sovereign democratic republic earlier we made it a sovereign democratic secular socialist republic good but then i was flying once with the minister of state of central government congress party i asked him sir what is the vision that you have for this country so he said swami ji wo jo hamare constitution mein hai na i said what is it exactly so the minister said you know secular democratic aise kuch hai that means he is not able to remember the vision enshrined in the constitution of our country now what do you think about the ordinary people will they be able to remember the sovereign socialist secular democratic republic so we dharmaraj ji vedi a national council for reconciliation and peace we present a vision a bharatiya dharma rajya an india where hindus and muslims and christians and everyone can live together as brothers and sisters to one another and this country is called to be a dharma rajya because dharma is the concept that is from the beginning of history embedded in the culture and spiritual tradition of our country dharma comes from sanskrit root dhar means to hold together to integrate to unite and dharma is that which integrates unites yes the governor has given me any amount of time he said you take yeah, yeah. so because this is a very important event yeah so dharma means to hold together unite integrate a country that is held together united integrated that is the vision of dharma rajya and when bharatiya dharma rajya which is this fundamental duties 11 fundamental duties which we refer to as bharatiya dharma a bharatiya dharma rajya built on the 11 fundamental duties of indian citizen that is our vision for the country not a hindu rashtra not a muslim country not a christian country but a bharatiya dharma rajya where hindus and muslims and christians everyone can live together as brothers and sisters to one another this is the dream that we want to put into the hearts and minds of the young people of this country especially the students of universities and colleges because to you the country turns for help at this time youth is the hope of the future they are dynamic and creative and it is through them we can build this new india of our dream beginning with a new kerala of our dream chaitanya keralam god's own country where the divine grace will be pervasive not political opportunism divine grace will be pervasive so a grace filled kerala chaitanya keralam chaitanya keralam bharata madavinte omana putriyum മാനവരാശിയുടെ പ്രത്യാശയുമായിട്ടുള്ളൊരു കേരളം ആ കേരളമാണ് നമ്മുടെ സ്വപ്നം ആ സ്വപ്ന സാക്ഷാത്കാരത്തിന് വേണ്ടിയാണ് നമ്മളിത് തുടങ്ങിയിരിക്കുന്ന
ആ കേരളത്തിൻ്റെ അടിസ്ഥാനവും ഇത് തന്നെയാണ് ഇലവൻ ഫണ്ടമെൻ്റൽ ഡ്യൂട്ടി ഈസ് മൈ യങ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദിസ് ഡ്യൂട്ടി അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദിസ് റെസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ആൻഡ് ട്രസ്റ്റഡ് ടു യു ബൈ ഹിസ്റ്ററി ആൻഡ് ഡെസ്റ്റിനി ടുഡേ ടു ബി ബിൽഡേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് കേരള മസ് ഷോ ദ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ദ മോഡൽ ബിക്കോസ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് ലിറ്ററേറ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദി പൊളിറ്റിക്കലി കോൺഷ്യസ് with all historical foundation that god is laid in this state that's why it's known as god's own land cut across the barriers so i keep telling my friends i dream of a kerala of a islamic body a hindu mind a christian heart islamic body i have lived with muslim community i have many many friends in fact two years i spent with the sufi tradition and they eat together unlike us islamic family when they eat most of them old families especially they put the food together in a big plate and eat sit around and eat it so when i was there they used to put little bit separate for me the same plate because i am a vegetarian so little vegetarian will be put abba jan mohammed zainul abidin who was my um, guru i used to call him abba jan abba jan means father and that fellowship that the muslim community has we have to learn this learn from it and five times namaz i had a high court judge sometimes traveling with me in the programs and at that appointed time he will go behind and then he will say his namaz so namaz is very important prayerful even in our ashram we have only three times prayer but the muslim friends do it five times minimum so this prayerfulness and fellowship kerala needs today and then hindu mind the universal mind hinduism is a mother of all religions accepting everyone embracing everyone and we need that universal vision that hindus are blessed with and christian heart a heart of self sacrificing love and selfless service it is that kerala the chaitanya kerala that we have in mind and my friends i pray on this special occasion you for your college for each one of you gathered here especially young people may the power and wisdom of god be with you take up the responsibility of building a new kerala and building this college of yours as a model for the rest don't be afraid don't be worried the lord is with us om shanti 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 thank you dr bharati We are pleased to have Rev. Dr. James Palakil, Sincilis of the Changlashiri Archdiocese and the manager of the St. Berkman's College to deliver the presidential address. A warm welcome to all of you. The Honorable Governor of Kerala, Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, ആചാര്യ ശ്രീ സച്ചിദാനന്ദ ഭാരതി സ്വാമി ബോധേന്ദ്ര തീർത്ഥ ആചാര്യ വെരി റവർ ഡോക്ടർ ജേക്കബ് കോറപ്പിസ്കോപ്പ ഡോക്ടർ ഹുസൈൻ മടവൂർ റവർ ഫാദർ റിജി കുര്യൻ റവർ ഡോക്ടർ ജോർജ് മടത്തിപ്പറമ്പിൽ ഫാദർ പുൻചേൽ ഡോക്ടർ സി എസ് ബിജു ആൻഡ് അതർ ഡിസ്റ്റിംഗ്വിഷ് ഗസ് ഓൺ ആൻഡ് ഓഫ് ദ ഡയസ് ഡിയർ ടീച്ചിങ് ആൻഡ് നോൺ ടീച്ചിങ് മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റാഫ് ആൻഡ് മൈ ബിലബഡ് സ്റ്റുഡൻസ് it is my privilege and pleasure to once again welcome our honorable governor sri arif mohammed khan and other distinguished dignitaries to our campus we believe that your presence here this afternoon adds a very special color and splendor to our centenary celebrations times have proved that the honorable governor sri arif khan is a staunch defender and guardian of our constitutional rights and its varied institutions a promoter of justice for all sections of the society irrespective of caste creed and or gender and a champion of communal peace and harmony thank you sir for your benevolent presence hearty congratulations to dr cs biju from St Thomas College Thrissur who is unanimously unanimously selected by the jury to receive the first Reverend Dr George Madathi Parambal such a total golden jubilee memorial award for the best english teacher 
This award is instituted by Reverend Dr. George Madathi Parambil to commemorate 50 years of grace-filled priestly life and ministry and to foster excellence in English language and literature among the English teaching faculty in the colleges of Kerala. The English department at St. Berkman's College has a long-standing and unshakable legacy of scholarship, academic excellence, and erudition. Needless to say, we have yet long miles to go before we sleep. This Centenary Award is yet another milestone in the sign on sight, being and life of St. Berkman's College. Thank you, dear Father George, on behalf of the entire college family for instituting this award. Indeed, a noble gesture from an admirable teacher, educationalist, a committed and zealous priest who loves SP College so passionately. Today we also reflect on the theme Reconciliation and Peace in the campus, an educational movement to promote a culture of peace in colleges and universities of Kerala. It is an endeavor founded on the fundamental duties of a citizen given under Article 51A of the Indian Constitution. Uh, reflecting from a Christian and Biblical perspective, reconciliation and peace are th the result fundamentally of conversion, metanoia in Greek, that is a change of heart and thinking. Conversion calls for an authentic awareness of the self and of the community. True humility to accept truth, a courage to shun selfishness, a willingness to undergo change and transformation on the part of the individual and of the community. In fact, the biblical concept of paradise points to a perfect state of reconciliation and peace. It entails a perfect equilibrium, a balance of relationships at four levels. First, perfect harmony in one's relationship with the divine God. Second, harmony in one's relationship with the nature. Third, harmony in one's relationship with other human beings. And finally, a state of harmony in one's own relationship with his or her own self. Let this reconciliation and peace movement in our campus, a challenge and a prospect, enkindle a spirit of conversion and change of heart in each one of us so that it could be reflected in the socio-political spheres of our lives. We hope and pray, Acharya, that your dreams may come true one day. Our third program is the Clean and Green Campus at St. Berkman's College to embark our centenary, earmark our centenary celebrations. We would like to have a clean and green campus through various means like proper waste management, removal of plastic, planting of more trees, etc. Yet, this too can yet this too can sustainably happen only when there is a purification of the heart and mind which calls for conversion. Our land is polluted basically because our minds are polluted. Our water is polluted basically because our minds are polluted. Our air is polluted because our minds are polluted. Let us rise up to the occasion to take up the challenge for ourselves and for our future generations to come. We hope and pray that these three initiatives during the centenary year may help St. Berkman's College to scale greater heights 
in the integral character formation of our students, academic excellence, and all-round peace and harmony in our society, which is a sine qua non for progress and sustainable development. May God bless you all. Thank you, Father James. The Honorable Governor will now inaugurate the Reconciliation and Peace Initiative, Dharmavedi, by presenting the fundamental duties of the Indian citizens to the other guests present. Please note that after receiving the copies of the fundamental rights, the guests should stand in front of the dais in the order they are called for a photograph. First, we request Reverend Dr. James Palakel to come forward and receive the copy of the fundamental duties. Please note that after receiving the copies of the fundamental rights, the guests should stand in front of the dais in the order they are called for a photograph. Next, we request uh, next we request Reverend Father Reggie P. Korean to come forward. Next, Professor P. J. Thomas. Next, Reverend Dr. Adai Jacob Korepiskopa. Followed by Dr. Adai Jacob Korepiskopa, we'll have Dr. Hussein Madavur, Swami Bodhendra Tirtha, Catherine Mataji, Mr. A.B. Matthews, Catherine Mataji, Mr. A.B. Matthews, Mr. Rajiv Mecheri, and Professor Anish K. Joseph. Thank you, dear guests. Now I request Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, Honorable Governor of Kerala, to give the Chief Guest address. Now we'll have the presentation of the Best Teacher Award. I invite His Excellency Arif Mohammed Khan, Honorable Governor of Kerala, to present Dr. C.S. Biju with the honors.
As part of the Centenary Memorial Green Campus Initiative, His Excellency Arif Mohammed Khan will now hand over a sapling to the principal of SB College, Reverend Father Reggie, as a symbol of sustainable living and love for nature. Now I request Sri Arif Mohammed Khan, Honorable Governor of Kerala, to give the Chief Guest Address. Reverend James Palakal, Vicar General and Manager, Achari Shri Dr. Sachidanand Bharti, Dr. Hussain Madavur, Reverend Dr. Adai Jacob, Swami Bodhendra Tirtha Acharya, Reverend Dr. George Madatti Parampil, Dr. C.S. Biju, Reverend Father Reji P. Kurian, Principal, Shri P.J. Thomas, Piri Peta Sahodri Sahodran Mare, Elavar Kumente Vandana. I am absolutely delighted to inaugurate the Reconciliation and Peace Education Movement launched at St. Brashman's College, Changasheri, which is celebrating its centenary year. First of all, my heartiest congratulations to the management teachers, staff, and students of this college as they are celebrating completion of 25 years of their alma mater. Uh, this is the occasion to remember all those who have worked very hard, who have been associated with this college in the past. And it is because of their hard work that this college has gone from strength to strength and is what it is today. I also congratulate Dr. C.S. Biju, who has received the Best Teacher Award instituted to mark the sacerdotal golden jubilee of Reverend Father George Madatti Parampil. I also pray divine blessings to be showered upon Reverend Dr. George Madatta Madatti Parappil. Founded in 1922 by Venerable Mar Thomas Kurial Sheri, Bishop of Changa Sheri, Diocese, SB College has been playing significant role in molding generations of students and furthering the growth of higher education in Kerala. I am told that this was the first higher education institute of Archdiocese of Changana Sheri that it has been autonomous college since 2015, having been ranked among the top 100 Indian colleges by the National Institutional Ranking Framework since 2018. It has been steadfast on its mission to train young men and women who will strive for excellence in every walk of life and human service. I'm sure people who are gathered here today realize the significance of the program which has been launched today, Reconciliation and Peace Education Movement, initiated by Adarniya Swamiji. Uh, 
पीस यूनिटी फ्रेटर्निटी डिग्निटी ऑफ मैन काइंड ऑल दीज आइडियल्स दे आर एब्सोलूटली प्रेशस एंड दिस इज नॉट समथिंग वेयर यू कैन बी सेटिस्फाइड फॉर इंस्टेंस वी हैव रिसेंटली सेलिब्रेटेड आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव ऑन द कम्पलीशन ऑफ सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ अवर इंडिपेंडेंस एंड एज अनाउंस बाई द ऑनरेबल प्राइम मिनिस्टर श्री नरेंद्र मोदी नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी फाइव ईयर्स वी विल ऑब्जर्व एज अमृत काल आज़ादी का अमृत काल वॉट डज दैट मीन वी हैड बिकम फ्री सेवेंटी फाइव ईयर्स है गो नो द ह्यूमन नेचर इज सच वी सफर फ्रॉम फॉरगेट फुलनेस गफ दर्म यूज इन अरबिक इज गफलत वे वी need to be reminded and again and again things which are precious they need special protection they need vigilance they need awareness to be protected i am so happy and i think i am one of the few functions of this nature where people have got gathered not to demand something but to remind themselves of their duty of their duty towards nation duty towards society how to make the, me, the national life meaningful in kerala or for that matter in india we we don't have to find discover the wheel again and again we only need to remind ourselves because we become forgetful in kerala's recent history shri narayan guru said oru jati ओरु मतम ओरु देवम मनुष्यान परफेक्ट सॉल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स वेर इज द प्रॉब्लम मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल हु आर सिटिंग हेयर आई एम नॉट प्रिज्यूमिंग एनीथिंग दे आर बिलीव दे मे बिलोंग टू एनी डिनोमिनेशन दे मे बी क्रिश्चियन हिंदू मुस्लिम और इविन अदर्स what their faith says as dr hussein has just now said does anybody believe that if they belong to a particular denomination that their god looks after only their denomination everybody believes that god is all powerful god is omnipresent omnipotent god takes care of everybody you may belong to any denomination but do you believe in that or not you believe in that when you are worshiping god you are not claiming that the god whom you are worshiping looks after you only nobody says that if god has the religious texts tell us that even a leaf of the tree does not fall without god's permission so if in your opinion maybe in your opinion i am not following the right path then are you responsible for me or god is responsible for me 
Who is responsible? Vama kana li nafsin antu mina illa bizni la vayaj alu risa le ladina la yakil wunen before that is walau shah rabbu kala amana man filar de kullu hum jamia afa anta tukri hun nasa hatta yokunu mominin if God had willed we all would have been we all would have been following the same path so God does not will that we all if God has not made our faces alike you think God has made our minds alike who am I to interpret to sit in judgment who am I to sit who am I to decide about any other person the real problem comes when the peace is disturbed peace is disturbed when certain person or certain group arrogates to itself the responsibility to bring others to the right path which they feel is the right path. No, that is not how the law of nature works. Nature, the law of nature is diversity, pluralism. You just go to your, the, if you have a garden in this college, you go there and you will kind, you will wonder the number of species which have been created and which grow on their own. And now science is telling us they are innumerable. Not just trees, small plants, herbs, but even insects, innumerable. And now science is telling us that this biodiversity is absolutely essential for the survival of the universe. Look, just cast a glance around the world. I don't want to name anybody. Countries which accept and respect diversity, they are all developed countries, they are all hugely prosperous countries, they are ahead in science, they are ahead in technology, they are ahead in every field. You see today Europe, Europe, don't, don't be under the mistaken impression that Europe, there were no problems. No, only till few hundred years back, people belonging to the same religion but belonging to different sects, they were shedding blood of each other. The day they realized that by burning the house of my neighbor, I cannot in any way help to improve his faith. From that day they had not looked backward. And not just that, they have received talent from all over the world. They have accepted that plural, uh, that diversity, cultural diversity, lingual diversity, faith diversity. They say this is not my concern. And sky is the limit for them in just about 200 years. After the Renaissance, after the democracy, after the human rights, they realize that we cannot live without diversity. And what about India? India has believed in this law of nature since the beginning of its civilization. India has believed that all people cannot be confined to one single interpretation of reality. India has always believed Indian culture has not been defined either by the color of the skin, by the language which we speak, by the faith tradition, 
that is how we express our devotion to the supreme being indian culture has been defined by atma language is exclusive if culture will be defined by language people speaking other languages will be excluded faith tradition others will be created skin color others will be created therefore indian thought leader said no our culture shall be defined by atma it was a great son of this state adi shankaracharya who went to who went all over the country people say he established four marts and created the unity of india buildings do not create unity howsoever majestic they may be all material monuments have a date of expiry okay what what is the great contribution of shankaracharya he gave four mahavakyas one to each mat from one veda they all all four mahavakyas mean the same thing aham brahmasmi tattvam asi ayam atma brahma pragyanam brahma all mean the same thing the divine potential of the man the brahma lies buried under the layers of ahem in your in your own self it is through the medium of tapas tapa that you can remove these layers of ignorance but one by one but it, it it requires a long long drawn process it does not happen in a day and the moment you realize samam sarveshu bhuteshu tishthantam parmeshwaram vinashyat suva vinashyanti ya pashyati sa pashyati the moment you start you reach that stage then you realize it is the same divine who dwells in each one of us and then we start seeing the imperishable in the perishable whatever is nashtvar whatever is going to be perished in that perishable thing we start seeing the imperishable and this is what creates what the word which has been used is sarvatr samdarshana then you reach a stage where you are not able to make any distinction where you treat everybody with the same respect with the same dignity but unfortunately we human beings you know i i love a sentence said by martin luther king he said he said what is our protest we are not asking any for anything the only thing we say to america is be true to what you say on paper i feel proud of my indian cultural legacy but i feel ashamed that we have not been loyal and truthful to that legacy the day we will start living that legacy and we will start seeing that divine in everybody where is the problem we will not only take the care of our problems we will show the world a way out today this is preached as a matter of good conduct being good human but the indian cultural legacy tells us that if i treat others with dignity and respect i am doing no favor to the other person i am doing good to myself what goes around the theory of karma what goes around it comes around i will only ben benefiting myself if i am nice to people if i recognize that that divinity in them and today only i was uh, saying that 
our Lord Savior said, the Spirit of God is with me. Why? Because I have been anointed to work for the poor. If you will identify yourself, if we identify ourselves, poor is not only economically poor. Anybody who is less endowed than you, than me, I must recognize his right over me. That person has, has a right over me. Whether it is in terms of money, whether it is in terms of intellect, whether it is in terms of knowledge, whether it is in terms of physical strength, whatever it may be. But if I am blessed with anything more than some other people, then those some other people have a right on me. If I work for them, I do no favor to them. I actually do favor to myself. And uh, I will conclude because I'm also in a bit of a rush. But since we have been talking about religion, religion has been defined so beautifully. One, uh, in Islamic tradition, the fourth caliph, Hadrat Ali, was asked, somebody asked him to define the religion. What is deen? He, he, said, he said, it is very simple. Al-Azmatu li amrillahi wa shafqatu li khalqillahi. The day, the greatness of the supreme being is fully internalized by you and you start loving the creation of that supreme being. You, you, are, you are in the deen. Shuru yatwa Dharma Sarvasvam Shirutva Cheva Vadhariyatam Atmana Piti Kulani Pareshamna Samacharayat. Whatever is hateful to you, do not do it to others. This is what the gospel says. And there is a beautiful anecdote with which I will conclude my remarks. Rabbi Hillel was a contemporary of Lord Jesus Christ. A pagan comes to him and says to him, if you read the whole book while standing on your one leg, I will embrace your religion. Rabbi Hillel did not dismiss the man, what nonsense you are talking. He immediately stood up on his one leg. He said, do not do unto others what is hateful to you. And sat down. He said, this thick book, and you have finished it in less than a minute? He said, this is the whole of book, rest is commentary, go home and read it. Sarva Shastra Purani Shu Vyasa Sevachanam Durvam Parop Karastu Purniyai Papai Parpirnam The whole essence of the religion is, if you do good to others, that is meritorious, and if you hurt others, then that is sinful. That is, if that guides our conduct, our behavior, then today is not the time that I talk about higher education. Uh, but if, if we do not deal with this subject seriously, which it deserves, then we are playing games with our future generation. Whatever we are doing to our universities, According to Professor C. N. R. Rao, Professor Panikar, the research work in Kerala universities has come to a complete halt. Don't think that Kerala youngsters, girls and boys, they lack talent, they do not lack talent. After 10 plus 2, because of the atmosphere prevailing in the universities, our universities, they go to national institutions and they are, they are so talented so brilliant, they, they are making a mark for themselves. Some other occasion, we will talk about that subject. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu, valre nanni, 
जय हिंद Now, as a token of our appreciation, Reverend Father Rajiv P. Kurian, Principal of S. P. College, would like to honor the Governor with a memento. Thank you, sir. Now, Professor P. J. Thomas, Associate Professor and the head of the department of head of the English department of Saint Bergman's College, will now give the word of thanks. Good evening to all of you, Your Excellency, <coughs> Governor of Kerala, Sri Arif Muhammad Khan, very distinguished guests, dear teachers, students, and my dear friends. I consider this a distinct honor. and a rare privilege to propose this very brief word of thanks we were really fortunate to have been experiencing some brilliant and best moments over the past one hour in the company of some of the best human beings of our times and also listening to some of the best and the most significant and badly needed ideas of our age like dharma peace reconciliation fundamental duties best teacher etc as all good things come to an end this too should however let us hope that the impact of this gathering may go beyond this hall and gather some momentum in our lives to continue to propagate these best values which our times really need as quantum entanglement and quantum non locality latest ideas of quantum physics tell us there will definitely be the invisible but really positive impact of our good thoughts and actions beyond particular time and place but my immediate task is to thank and be grateful to all those who have given us these precious moments foremost of them is his excellency sri ari muhammad khan governor and the head of the state of kerala who was generous to be here with his wise and convincing words he has proved himself to be a wise governor and an effective head of the state with his actions and words in the recent times he is certainly a philosopher ruler in the platonian tradition some of his decisions are like that of the wise king solomon in the bible who ordered the child to be cut into two halves to establish justice he also might appear to some as cruel and overtly political but he is conscientious and ethical like the character of hamlet by shakespeare who wants to be kind in the end wishing him all the best in his relentless pursuit of justice and the maintenance of law let me offer his excellency the deep felt gratitude of the department of english saint bergman's college dharma rajavedi national council for reconciliation and peace and also on behalf of all of you who have gathered here thank you your excellency now let me also thank reverend dr james palakal manager of the college for making the presidential address let me specially thank ajay sri sachidananda bharati the founder of dharma bharati ashram and dharma rajavedi who is also the main moving who is also the main moving force and spirit behind today's meeting and also for giving the keynote address let me also thank so deeply swami bodendra tirtha Reverend Dr. Adai Jacob Corapiscopa, Dr. Hussein Madhur, for their kind felicitations. Let me also thank Reverend Dr. George Madathi Parambil and his family for the generous endowment, which made this Best English Teacher Award at the college level possible today. Thank you so much for your contribution to the cause of teaching, and also to the English language. Let me also congratulate Dr. C. S. Biju. for winning this year's best teacher award and also thank him and his family for their presence today let me also specially thank mada ji kadarin of dharma bharati ashram and other members of dharma rajavedi teachers of our college students media personnel former teachers other invited guests and also the principal of the college let me also add a special note of gratitude 
to the personal staff of the governor's office headed by Dr. Arul R.B. Krishna IPS and others for their guidance and support. Thank you all once again. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. We've come to the end of this auspicious event. Thank you all for your kind cooperation. Now we request everyone to rise for the national anthem. Jan Gan Man Athinayak Jaya Hai Bharat Bhagya Vidata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravid Utkal Vanga Vindya Himachal Yabuna Ganga Ujjjal Jalati Taranga Tav Shubh Name Jage तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे